Um, just before I start, they will be pleased to know that um, I met with a colleague from the Clinical Commission group yesterday, and we agreed to use all their health information in our literacy and numeracy classes and our ESOL classes, so that there will be resources that uh, make up some of the uh, elements of the class. So uh, that work is happening, happening on the ground. Um, so as you just heard, I, I'm Jackie Bradley and I manage community learning for Oxfordshire Children's Learning Service. Um, uh, but also, I'm the chair of the Community Learning Trust for Oxfordshire, which is the Oxfordshire Learning Network. Um, so I'm also speaking on behalf of our membership, which is over 100 people and growing. Um, and so we're developing and delivering the community learning curriculum for Oxfordshire. And I think it's important just to talk a little about partnership work. Um, so whilst I don't have time to explain about the Oxfordshire Learning Network in great detail, um, it might be helpful to share our strategic objectives, um, which underpin the delivery. <coughs> so they are, and it's very helpful, they're four P's, um, partnership, participation, progression, and town plus. Um, so in a nutshell, we aim to work in partnership with relevant stakeholders in the heart of community to create learning opportunities that support a variety of wider social initiatives, including health and wellbeing, which is helpful, because that's what we're talking about today. Uh, we target over 60% of our funding, um, and I don't like to say act priority groups, but more at priority outcomes. Um, and that helps us to widen participation. We see our work as an engagement activity, um, a bit like a gateway, really, for people to access progression pathways, um, some of which are mapped and planned, and others which emerge for people, and we support people through our information and advice and guidance, and that includes signposting people to other services, as well as to further learning. Uh, and Pound Plus may not be a familiar term to people who aren't in the community learning world, um, but it's a methodology for calculating the added value that community learning funding attracts, um, mostly through working in partnership, and it recognises the contribution that partners make um, to the delivery of community learning. So we deliver these strategic objectives through four district-based partnerships, um, and they bring together organisations and individuals who are the local leaders and who really know their communities. Um, so we identify local needs by linking in with um, existing initiatives, and our colleagues are from right across the sector, so they might be people from statutory authorities, or they might be individuals who just know their area, like the local green buster, or um, the vicar, it might be. Um, so the curriculum is then planned according to the priorities that are um, agreed at our local partnership level. So that's kind of in a nutshell how the partnerships organise themselves. Um, if anybody would like any more information, there is a website link that will be in the resources. I'm very happy to talk to people about that model. Um, so the area where we see most synergy is um, the prevention agenda, and I think that community learning really impacts on um, prevention of ill health and uh, promotion of health and well-being. So in a few moments, you're about to see a short clip. Um, which is just a snapshot of the many learning opportunities that are impacting on people's health and well-being in Oxfordshire um, through the collaborative planning and delivery that I mentioned earlier. So the first element is the Dementia Friendly Communities Project, which was originally an adult community learning funded project um, in 2011, and now it's a sustainable activity, and um, there's um, a well-developed partnership with Oxfordshire Skills and Learning Service, the Guidepost Trust, uh, National Health Service Partners, Oxfordshire Rural Communities Campaign, who help us to get into communities and they um, give us access to people, uh, particularly in rural areas where services may, they may be a long way away from services. Um, the Red Cross and an organisation called Dementia First. Um, I won't go through all of the aims and objectives of the um, projects, but it aimed to accelerate the pace of improvement in the pathway of care in Oxfordshire to raise um, the quality of life of people with dementia and the people who look after people with dementia. Um, and just to give a little bit of 
background. Um, sessions were delivered in 62 settings. 650, well more than 650 people took part and 445 dementia champions were recruited. And dementia champions are people who said that they would like to work with people in more uh, or to take, take it further from the initial three-hour engagement tour. Um, and some communities delivered an action plan about how they could be a dementia-friendly community and what other things they'd like to do as a, result of, as a result of knowing more about how dementia affects not only individuals, but families and communities. So you'll see a little bit about that. And for me, um, the, the, the biggest impact was um, the peace of mind that carers um, achieve from knowing a little bit more about dementia. Um, the second element of the video is um, showing how uh, a partnership with the Health and Wellbeing Centres and Carers Oxfordshire has worked to uh, deliver something that we call in Oxfordshire community-led learning. And basically, um, that's something that which is a response to learning needs in the wider sense um, of local communities and individuals. It's tailor-made and it's delivered to people where they live. So people aren't asked to travel into courses. It's learning, as we say, in the widest sense. Um, and it's designed um, and planned with partners who also have a stake in the health and well-being of communities. Okay. So just to give you an example of um, what community learning might look like, um, we've organised our delivery into, into different strands, and they are, uh, well, they include, they're not um, all of them, but they include reducing social isolation, um, and examples might be digital inclusion courses, it might be helping people who would like to volunteer as a result of accessing um, the, the provision, uh, courses for carers, um, courses for adults with learning difficulties and more difficulties, um, developing and supporting mental health and wellbeing, um, and it's more uh, examples of our dementia awareness training, which you'll see. Um, CBT was mentioned earlier, and we work with partners in, in Oxfordshire Mines <coughs> and local voluntary organisations. Uh, we have a small organisation called Restore, who delivers mental health first aid, um, and there are skills-based courses that support people in employment. Um, I won't go through all of the list, but I'll tell you the overarching uh, titles. So we've got Developing and Maintaining Confidence, uh, we've got supporting older people to stay active, and in the clip you'll see um, Cliff, who is one of our learners, he did CPD yoga and it made a real difference to his life. Um, supporting families and developing and maintaining physical well-being, to mention just a few. So just one last thing that I'd like to share with you, and it links to what some of the speakers have already spoken about, is about how we measure the impact of what we do in community learning. And I've been really interested to hear from SEGs about gathering the same kind of impact. Um, we've developed a, a model that came from the Cliff Project that Helen has been talking about earlier. Um, and I worked in Cambridgeshire previously where we piloted the model as a Cliff Project participant. And then we further developed it. Um, and I think one of the important things to note is that we, we're very good in adult learning about collecting the anecdotal evidence of how we're reflected and how we really impact on people's lives. Um, but what we need to get more clever at is um, collecting qualitative data to support it. Um, and so the toolkit that we've designed has been, as a, it's been thought through very carefully about the impacts, but I would like to look at the ones that were mentioned earlier to make sure we're collecting similar ones. Um, but the, um, the wider impact of learning on social issues such as health and wellbeing, um, social and digital inclusion um, is becoming increasingly significant for us to show a measure of our success. And as we've spoken about earlier, um, our funders and local strategic partners need to know um, about the added social value of community learning provision. So I'll leave you with that thought and um, hopefully we